Okay, it is Tuesday morning, September 10th. It's almost 10 o'clock, and uh, today I may go solo. So we're heading over to the hangar. You know, you've done a whole bunch of fun things with Dayton, all kinds of autos and auto returns, uh -huh. and 180s. You know, you fly a lot of different aircraft, and um, what I encourage people to do, like, Always do your first couple landings with power. Get used to the side picture again, the height, the flare, and all that stuff before you just go into doing full touchdown. Okay, with the, uh, you mean solo because of the right, last right, way. Right. And what I'm expecting with this is the fact that it's going to have a lot more performance, it's going to climb better. Uh, if you were doing a normal land and, you know, power off, then it's going to react quicker. Right. So, you know, you could have a tendency to, you know, overcompensate right. and, and flare it and stuff. So, you know, it's just, just a matter of getting a feel. Okay, so a little bit of power on the first landing or so. And yeah, and, uh, and even like your first time around the pattern, just come around, there, say, uh, you know, just 10 feet off the ground and just do a, just do a go around the first time around. Okay. Do a, get, all the, get all the butterflies out, see how you are going to possibly balloon with less 200 pounds gone. Right. And, uh, you know, just kind of work yourself into it. So. All righty, here we go. Let's go solo. Yeah, I just, you know, I just mainly want to just go around a couple landings and it's no big deal, probably three or four. All right. Hey, would you turn my camera on? Certainly. Just the top button until it beeps. There he goes, all right. Okay, let's see if I can do this without killing myself. Park and brake is set. <coughs> Master switch is on. I got the lights. Trim is full forward. Safety belt, helmet secure, cyclic is free, but I still got the lock on here. Altimeter still okay. Breakers are all in. Radios are off. I'll leave choke. I don't need one boost pump for start. Mags to both. Throttles cracked. Cyclic's forward. Can you clear it? Clear prop. Okay, so we got the parking brakes set, and I'm starting to engage the rotor here on the stick. There's a little handle that I'm using with my little uh, little fingers on my right hand. I'm starting to engage the rotor, just slowly pulling it. It's kind of like a clutch. And 
we're going to kind of get it up to a certain speed before we start taxiing. Here we go, and at some point, uh, it's going to get a little bit loud with the throttle, so we'll try to make sure we can adjust the sound so you can hear me. Taxiing out. Wow, I feel like I'm going out on my first day. Fun and anticipation, yet scary. Motor RPM still coming up. Got the stick back uh, all the way, and the reason is when I want the highest angle because once you start moving it forward, that high angle will spin the speed up even quicker. And what we're going to do here is we're going to release the clutch very quickly once we get to 220, and we're going to go to 100% throttle. There we go. Pop the release. Make sure all the belts in the back are uh, loose. We're going to get the nose up first, and once it lifts up, I push the stick forward and keep it there. And once it lifts off, I hold it at 60 miles an hour, which is climb speed. And once I get 60, that's the climb speed. And that's going to be my pattern speed as well. I'm adjusting the elevator trim about now. The elevator trim is on top of the control stick. else in the pattern too so it was pretty much all mine to kind of do what I wanted to do with. And once we get up on the downwind leg what I'll do is I'll adjust the throttle, slow it down to basically maintain the 60 mile an hour pattern speed which is recommended. This time I'm thinking that, you know, he had mentioned for me to come in, use a little bit of power on my first couple of landings, just kind of get used to the gyro and having, you know, almost a couple of hundred pounds uh, less weight there. So I've already noticed an increase in performance. Still using a little bit of throttle. Of course, what will happen here is the more throttle I have, the longer uh, you know I'll be able to, to glide. So at this point, I just want to kind of do a, a powered approach just to be on the safe side and get the feel, which is what the instructor recommended. Maintaining 60 miles an hour and I'm using the throttle to control my descent angle. At some point, I get down low enough to the ground and bring the throttle back. Slow it, hold it off, hold it off, just like a normal three-point landing. Touches down. And at this point, the rotor RPM is still running pretty good. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the throttle and go around again. Because the rotor RPM is still pretty, pretty high at this point. We'll see a little bit later that when I try and slow down or do a full stop, I'll have to re-engage the, the pre-rotor and get the RPM back up to 220 before I start moving. Climbing out at 60. Since there was nobody else in the pattern, there was no real point of making, you know, long base legs and crosswind legs. Throttle them back, maintain the 60 miles an hour. I'm doing now is I'm basically going to do the same type of approach I did on the first one, but I'm just going to come in with a little bit less throttle just to get the feel of the descent angle with no throttle, uh, as well as just kind of keeping some throttle in there and you know just have a little bit more control over the gyrocopter as I get the feel of it.
Hey, look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> Still got a little bit of throttle coming in. Actually, I may have had a little bit no throttle, but I'm going to add a little bit of throttle prior to the flare. Just kind of let it uh, feel it out, do a normal, just a, like a three-point landing. And here I played around a little bit, holding the stick back to see how fast it would slow down without the brake. So by holding that rotor at the highest angle, it acts as a big freaking like a parachute. Okay. Full throttle again. Rotor RPM is still going up. 60 miles an hour. Off we go. It goes up at a pretty good angle, actually. I think I got this puppy figured out. Again, throttle in the back and maintain 60 mile uh, an hour pattern speed. And it's taken less RPM than it did, you know, with two people in it. Here, what I've done is I've completely wiped the throttle off, basically practicing a dead stick landing. And uh, I've just gone ahead and hit the angle of the runway to get there a little sooner just to make sure I can make it. As you see, I've made it with uh, not any problem. Slowing it down. Nice touchdown, lower the nose. Basically, repeat as necessary. Now here what I was doing is I was playing around and I basically had taken off, I'd throttled back and I was maintaining 60 miles an hour, actually less, uh, to fly as slow as I could down the runway, kind of like what I do with a storage. So I'm at a high angle, the minimum amount of throttle, I'm using the throttle to control my altitude. Once I get a uh, certain way down the runway, I just add the throttle, get my 60 miles an hour, and back up. It's basically just fly like flying a storch, but with a rotor on top instead of a wing. This is what I did. I went down to idle and I'm slowing down to zero airspeed. Uh, we'd practiced this before. I wanted to do it by myself. I'd gone up a little higher. I think I was about 1,200 feet. So we're slowing down, bringing the throttle back, bringing the nose up, and I'm going down to zero airspeed. But in a gyrocopter, you don't stall. What you do is you descend vertically. Down we go. I'm going straight down. Okay, enough of that. I've done it. <laughs> Push the nose forward, a little bit of throttle, and uh, get some airspeed back, and I've done it. Okay, so on this one, I've pretty much figured out, you know, what the glide angle is with less and less throttle. So basically, I've wiped the throttle off here, checking my time. Um, basically wipe the throttle off. This is basically no power. So that's a, that's actually a pretty impressive glide angle coming down with no power. And this time I'm going to go ahead, I'm slowing down more, slowing down more, slowing down more. Still getting kind of the feel of it. Had I done more, you know, I could have uh, slowed it down, but I'm going to do a full stop landing this time. 
once I touch down, I'm leaving the nose wheel off. You see, I've picked it up. I'm holding the stick back, holding the stick back, allowing that rotor at a high angle to be like a brake. And right at the end, I add a little bit of brake. Of course, now um, I'm going to have to spin the pre-rotor up to 220 RPM because I've slowed the rotor down uh, with all that drag by trying to stop. Once I get to 220 RPM, I'm going to pop the release on the rotor handle, go to 100% throttle, and off we go. Now, this engine has actually got a turbocharger on it, and it'll go to 115% boost and they use that basically for like getting out of soft fields or if you want to do a you know a high angle short takeoff or something like that. And as you can see, I mean look at this man, I'm going up at a pretty good angle here. Okay, here I'm practicing getting the feel of a dead stick landing at slower and slower air speeds. So I basically started my flare earlier and I wanted to see if I could land even shorter. Full stop. Of course I gotta get the pre-rotor going back up 220 RPM. It'll be 100% throttle. One of the things that the, uh, the earlier gyros do, I'm not sure this one has enough rotor inertia to do it, but what they would do is, the rotor inertia is basically the weight of the blades, okay? And it makes a big difference when you're doing auto rotations in a helicopter, or even in a, uh, of course, a, the auto gyro is always auto rotating. So what they would do in the older the auto gyros, pit cairns and the Sierras, is they would come down at a certain angle, maybe a little faster than normal, and right before they got to the ground, maybe 60 feet, something like that, they would honk back on the stick, which would increase the angle on the rotors. And what the rotors would do is they would cone up, because you're pulling some Gs, and when you pull the Gs in, it would be like a skater pulling their arms in, and what would happen is it would basically increase the rotor RPM. They would pull out slowly and just about land in a hover. Now here what I've done is I've set up on my last final landing here to do a dead stick landing to the far intersection. So that's why I've cut my downwind leg short. Got a pretty good feel for what the glide angle is. Coming in, slowly rotating, slowing this thing down, slowing it down until it touches like a three-point landing. There I am locking off the pre-rotor. Now I'm going to allow the pre-rotor to wind down on its own. Push the trim all the way forward. And uh, I would note that on that little light up there on the panel. Axion in. Feeling pretty good. That was a lot of fun. I'd love to have one of these one day. Uh, turn one of the uh, fuel boost pumps off. There's two over there, the guarded switches. Now I, I'm taxiing back to the hangar by myself because I had left the instructor out on the ramp there. and uh, So he's walking back. All right, I'm a gyro pilot. <laughs> okay, mags, master, boost pumps off, awesome. 
Well, what do you think, Kermit? That was pretty cool. Actually, I tell you what, when it's light, when it's light like this, it seems like it would actually, uh, you could just about, you know, honk it and uh, do a hover landing in the pit cairn. I can see what, how they used to do that. Over and out on this camera. You know, what I noticed was, you know, definitely it's got a lot more performance. It's a lot lighter. You're not carrying the weight. Uh, it took about probably 300 RPM less to maintain, you know, 60th pattern altitude than it does with another person on there. So that was that was uh, interesting. And the uh, I see what you mean with the power, uh, you know, doing the power, you know, if you hadn't been at it for a while. But I got to tell you, if as long as you're low to the ground, you could just about just about stop the thing if you like three point. You know? yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was that was exciting, and I can I can kind of see with some rotor inertia in the older uh, auto gyros, you know, where the guys could honk it like that, come in, and then just settle down to the ground. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And I, I like what you did on a couple of them. You, you you saw how slow you could go low to the ground. Yeah. That that'd be like an air taxi. So, yeah. But I mean. You know, I was gonna, you know, a couple of times we landed on the taxiway, and I thought, no, not on the solo. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't need yeah. to surprise you with that. But. Well, the the thing, uh, you know, you can't air taxi with the thing, but I don't know if the guys in the tower would be would know what you're gonna do, right? Or would they be expecting you to do what a helicopter do? Yeah, right? exactly. So, but yeah. anyway, that was good that you yeah, yeah. composed. Well, you know, it. actually, I do I do a lot of flying on a Fiesler Storch, which is a World War II German really. It was like one of their first Stoll airplanes, uh -huh. and I always fly really low, and I'm just on the power and the stick. Yeah. You know, the power is my altitude, and the stick is just right on the freaking hairy edge of a stall. And so that came very natural to me yeah. uh, doing this, you know, and, and I, I've got, I could really get it slow. And of course, once you get it really slow and you get it back to a certain point, then you're getting some lift from your thrust vector off the, yeah. off the engine. So, yeah. but, uh, you know, but, you know, the worst, I think one time we did touch on the tail wheel. <laughs> Well, yeah, but that, no, that's, that's what it's for. Good. So I think I did okay. <laughs> I think great. I did okay. You did great. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, if, if you want to get your life and knock that out. You yeah, know, good, good, good. Super. You well, thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. So Kermit is now a solo auto gyro pilot. That's pretty freaking cool. So anyway, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it's got a lot more performance. Oh my God, I did one of those short field takeoffs where you go and you go into boost and all that God, thing climbs like a rape tape. Anyway, it's uh, pretty cool. I'm excited about flying the pit cairn, although it's a little different than this. And I gotta tell you, I think I did a lot better on my gyro solo than I did on my first date. Just saying.